On June 26, 2024, industrial inspection revealed that they were able to see inside of booster packs and pre-release kits using CT scanners. Now, this technique has been speculated about for years, but never confirmed, at least until now. Then, on July 16, 2024, Aaron Wayne's strange brain revealed the same technique and that he was able to tell the centering of a card, measure the borders, and suggested that this may be the future of grading. He also posted a breakdown of his research on Hackaday, which I'll put a link to in the description, but it should be noted that CT scanners and other imaging devices can cause harm to you and those around you if you don't know what you're doing. And Aaron Wayne does this for a living. And yes, his CT scanner cost him $1,400, but it was broke and it took months of work to get it up and running. Now, a working CT scanner can cost tens of thousands of dollars, some over a million dollars, which may seem like a barrier to entry for most people. But it is a small price to pay for grading companies, large influencers, and whales in this space. Then, on July 27, 2024, OKJ OK Love collaborated with Industrial Inspection and revealed that they're able to view the contents of not just booster packs, but also booster boxes, elite trainer boxes, and other products. And not just from Pokemon, but also Lorcana, Magic the Gathering, One Piece, and yes, even sports cards. This video was followed by an announcement that the company was going to start scanning packs as a service, starting at $75 a pack or $65 a pack for orders containing 11 or more booster packs, while the price to scan booster boxes and cases is to be determined by a quote. Now, this announcement was followed by a landslide of reactions from those within the collector and investor communities, some of which claim that you can scan a pack for as low as $15. thought to myself, I'm like, there's no doubt in my mind before the year's out, what, what do we know about technology? They always make it smaller, cheaper, faster, you know, all of the above. And lo and behold, $15 per pack straight away, right after. That's actually insane. That's like the price of grading a card. Now, I wouldn't call it insane. I would call it untrue because if you look at their website, it clearly states what each service is and how much it costs. But I went ahead and reached out to Industrial Inspection and they were able to clarify that the $15 service is to provide images for people who cannot use their software to view the results of the scan. So you're either illiterate or you just got caught lying to your audience slash customers in order to get them to go after this company. And something that should be noted about industrial inspection is that they have worked with Activision, GE, Goodyear, Kellogg's, and other large companies while handling sensitive data. Now, I think it's quite humorous that PokeVault is okay with operating an illegal casino that targets children and adults with gambling addictions while giving financial advice about speculative investments that he himself is financially invested in and sells, but yet this is where he draws the line. And it's because if this service takes off, it will hurt the price of vintage products that he sells and hurt the business of his business partners like Nicholas Margiotti, aka PokeRub, who also targets children with his products and is considered the Mr. Beast of the Pokemon space, which is ironic because he too employs a PDF file that he continues to protect. And just in case if you're wondering, yes, kids are participating in these box breaks where these packs can cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. This is actually for Andrew's son, Troy, who is a legend that watches the channel all the time. So make sure you guys say what's up to Troy. Troy, I think, is nine years. You're nine years old, right? You're about to be, I think you're going to be 10 soon. Regardless, PokeRev and PokeVault heavily rely on vintage product because of their breaks and mystery packs, which I've previously shown are scams because of how they are rigged. And with their followers slash customers being fed up with vintage related scams, Sean's video feels like damage control, especially when he starts to comment about the ethics of whether or not something can be used for good or evil. I know I've seen great power in the wrong hands. Okay, we all have. And this is, that's what this is. Okay, that's what this is. And let me tell you something. We've read the stories. We've seen the, we've seen the movies. Okay, it never is used for good. It's always used for evil. Which I guess his logic doesn't apply elsewhere. Now I find it a bit hypocritical that he claims he is against pack weighing, but yet he's okay with purchasing products from people like TCA Gaming that weigh their packs to maximize their profits during a break. Yeah, TCA is as trusted as it gets. Yeah, TCA is as trusted as it gets. 
Yeah, TCA is as trust as it gets. And you have to pay more if you want it unweighed. And for anyone that wants to defend TCA Gaming, claiming that it's to verify the contents of a box, it's not. He gatekeeps that shit by charging extra. Companies like PokeVault and PokeRev have made a ton of money from box breaks and mystery packs using high dollar collectibles that were sourced through their own companies or through others like Brian Lipinski. They then advertise and or shout out the prices of cards within these products, making it seem like you are winning that amount of money. Just another day in the office, Justin Kenyon, get your ass up off your leather cracked sofa and put your callous little toes on your Spanish tile floor and get off your ass because it just happened for you. This is a easy, easy $300 bill. Yes, let's go, man. Oh my God. Oh my God. Blastoise in a 10 is like 20, 20,000. That's the OG baby in a nine. It's like 4,000 in a nine. This is literally going to be one of the craziest breaks we've ever done on the channel. And we're going to, we're going all out. There's guaranteed hits in both boxes. Okay. So this is out of Supreme Victors. This, this Charizard right here in a PSA 10 is like $4,000. But like honestly, any common, uncommon, any literally any card out of a box of this, if you if you get in like a nine or ten, is literally worth money. Money. Now going back to Sean's response to CT scanning, he tries to blur the line between opening packs for himself versus having to document a box break for his customers. If it brings vintage down to a, a more reasonable level, I would love to have that feeling one more time of buying something and being able to open it off camera for my pleasure at my leisure. That's how I started. And I haven't had that feeling in years. Truly, I have not had that feeling in years. Because now, number one, because it's so expensive, I feel like I have to be documenting it when I open it. Not to mention having an effing YouTube channel where that's what I do. So it's like double, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Look, the reason why Sean is so worried about CT scanning isn't because of the moral implications of it, because otherwise he wouldn't be running an illegal casino that gives financial advice for speculative investments. The reason why he's concerned is because it's bad for business, and he did the same type of video when people started calling them out for their mystery packs, where he started twisting people's words and making assumptions. To tackle some rumors that have been kind of circulating, and some more, more, Kind of misguided thoughts and fallacies and then others are straight up rumors where statements are being made that are just completely not true uh for me or for i'm assuming other people's products but that we'll just leave that as my opinion there's been a lot of mystery pack drama and maybe not so much drama sometimes but more like reviews and then certain statements and allegations that are made and not only just on YouTube, but maybe on other social medias. If, if you know, then you know, and I don't have to go too much further into it. The point I'm trying to make here is that he only does these types of videos is whenever he's trying to do damage control. And right now, Nick and Sean are afraid that speculative investors and little kids are going to stop pumping money into their pockets because speculative investors are going to speculate whether or not their investments were scanned right before their mystery packs were seeded or before a box break, and rightfully so. Because as of right now, there's no way to tell if a box has been scanned and these guys have been previously caught rigging their mystery packs. Something I haven't talked about on this channel yet is the PokeRev God Box videos, where he peeked inside of the packs and resealed the boxes. So here's the deal right here. You basically just cut into it and you can see that it's the black code card right there. And then you go through a lot of white code card packs. Those all get opened up as well. But basically, that is it on how to create this god box here. Yes, it was for show, but how many last pack magic moments during his live breaks were also for show, and he didn't disclose it, or openings in general. All right, it comes down to this. Champion's Path. We'll sleep tonight with the shiny Charizard feet. But...
I don't think we're gonna sleep super well knowing that the Rainbow Rare Charizard VMAX is still out there waiting for us. I can't I still cannot believe that. It comes down to this. Again. Every card. Okay. Poke Cave. This is it. Behind this hop. What's behind this hop door? Greg. <laughs> Says do another 136. If he can prove that that pack wasn't resealed and that he didn't fake that opening, I will delete this channel. And as much as I hate the idea of people scanning boxes for Charizards or Umbreons, there are going to be influencers spending thousands of dollars to scan the latest sets, all for the sake of content. And it's been a while since I've had to say this, but this is what happens when speculative investors are taught to treat a TCG like it's the stock market. CT scanning, whether we like it or not, is going to be a double-edged sword just like Pac Wayne, and it's going to result in grifters asking for premiums just like with grading and Pac Wayne. And it's only going to get cheaper, it's going to get faster, and more companies are going to offer it as a service. And there isn't a damn thing the Pokemon company can do to prevent it that is financially viable for them because they're not going to start putting toxic materials or heavy metals in their packs and adding any additional material will add weight and it's going to hurt their profit margins because of R&D, production, and shipping cost. In fact, they're going to see this as another push towards an all-digital TCG, which is more profitable for them in the long run, as apps such as Pokemon Go and Pokemon Unite have already proven this. But the best thing we can do right now is make sure that this company sets a positive precedent towards the future of CT scanning instead of reacting the way that people have. And yes, it is a big freaking deal that's going to cost a lot of innocent people money, but do you really think that with all the unregulated gambling and praising of grifters, the whales of this hobby are going to magically grow a conscience? Finally, I want to take Sean's threat as a challenge. And God help you. If I see that you are in some way promoting or employed by a company like this. So if industrial inspection is watching, I would like to review your service without any form of payment, but under a few conditions. One, use any funds that you would have given me to buy as many PokeRev and PokeVault mystery packs as possible using multiple addresses and different names. Two. Scan the packs and open them for me while I review the results with you on this channel. And three, you keep the cards or give them to my subscribers. But that's all I've got for now. If you feel like I've earned it, please like and subscribe. And as always, I will catch all of you slow bros and ho-ohs later. Bye.